First, there was the Vita 1000 model with its flowing lines and glorious OLED display. Then along came the Vita 2000 with its slimmed down form factor and extended battery life. And now the Vita 3000 emulator lets you play your favorite Vita games right on your computer. This video guide will get you up and running with the Vita 3K emulator in just a matter of minutes. Stick around, you're about to learn something new. The first step in the process is to download the Vita 3K emulator from the Vita 3K website. I have it linked for you in the video description. In the top navigation menu, click on Downloads. This scrolls the page down to the download section where you'll find that there are versions available for Windows, Mac OS, Linux, and even Android. In this case, this is a Windows install guide, so I'll click on the download button shown here on screen to grab the latest version from the GitHub. Next up, on the same page, go back up to the top navigation menu, locate Quick Start, and click on it to open the Quick Start guide. The first thing to check out in the Quick Start guide are the minimum and recommended settings for your computer for the Vita 3000 emulator to run correctly. Next up, on the same page, scroll down until you see the section called Other Requirements. There's a download link here for the redistributable version of Microsoft Visual C. You'll need this for the emulator to work correctly. There's a link right here shown on screen, and when you click on it, it downloads the file directly from Microsoft's website. While you're still on the same Quick Start webpage, scroll down until you get to the section called Dumping Games. There's key information here about the format that your games need to be in in order to work correctly in the emulator. For this video, I'll be using backups of my Vita games in no NPDRM format. While you're still on the Vita 3K website, go up to the home page link in the top navigation and click on it. There's a link here in the navigation called Compatibility. Click on this link and the page will scroll down to a section with a link to the Vita 3K compatibility guide. It's embedded in the text shown here, and once you click on it, it will open up a separate section of the guide. What's really awesome about this compatibility list is it has each of the Vita games broken down section by section for how effectively they run in the emulator. For example, there are currently 496 games listed as playable inside this compatibility list. If you click on any one of these sections, it will filter out the games by that particular section. For example, if you click on the green playable button, it filters the list down to only games that are listed as playable inside the emulator. This can help you with your content selection process moving forward. Speaking of content, while I can't show you where to get content, what I can show you is what the content should look like once you've backed it up from your PlayStation Vita in no NP DRM format. I'm going to double click into this games folder that I already have pre-staged in the downloads folder. These games are already zipped up, so I'm going to unzip one of them so that we can take a quick look inside together so that you can see what a piece of no NP DRM content should look like to work with the emulator. Your no NP DRM game content should have a folder called app. When you double click into the app folder, you should have a subfolder with an identifier code for your PlayStation Vita game. Inside that subfolder, you'll see a series of files and folders, and they should contain a folder called data and some folders that say SCE in them. Okay, now that we've taken a good look at what your no NP DRM content should look like, I'm going to go ahead and delete the extracted folder out of this games folder since there's already a zip file for it represented here. Now that you know the prerequisites for things to work correctly inside the emulator, let's get things set up and running. I'm going to go back to the downloads folder here so that we can install the Visual C add-on from Microsoft. Navigate to the installer file inside your downloads folder and double click on it. At the installer screen, click the checkbox that says I agree, then click install in the bottom right corner to continue. At the UAC prompt, click on yes to install the software. Once the installation process is complete, click close in the bottom right corner to close out the installer. You won't need this installer file any longer, so you can right click on it and select delete to send it to the recycle bin. Next up, extract the downloaded Vita 3K zip file. You can extract it wherever you like, but for this example, I'll just extract the folder right in the downloads folder. Once you have it extracted, delete the zip file out of your downloads folder. Double click on the newly extracted Vita 3K folder. Inside this folder, you'll find an executable file with a unique icon. That is the Vita3k.exe file. Double click it to launch the setup process for the emulator. The first thing to do is select the language for the emulator. In this case, I'm going to select English United States because that's where I'm at. Choose the language option that best suits your needs and then click Next in the bottom right corner. You'll be shown a pre-established path where files will be copied over. You can choose to keep this default path, which is what I've done here, or you can change it to a customized path of your own. When you're satisfied with the install path, click Next in the bottom right corner to continue. 
you'll be given the option to install the official PlayStation Vita firmware from the Sony website. Click the Download Firmware button shown here. This will open a web browser page with the official Sony PlayStation Vita firmware. Click on the Download Update button to download the firmware. A quick note if you're using Chrome like I am. You can click on this button all you want and it won't likely download the firmware. Here's what you need to do instead. Right click on the Download Update button and select Open in New Window. In the new window that appears, click the refresh button in the top left corner. This will download the official system software for the PlayStation Vita to your computer. Now that the download's complete, you can close out your web browser. And if you're like me and you're using Chrome, you can close it out twice. Back at the Vita 3K interface, click on Install Firmware File. In your Downloads folder, you'll find a file called psvupdate.pup. Locate that file and either double click on it or click on it one time and click on Open to continue. You'll see a pop-up window in the Vita 3K emulator that installation is in progress. You'll get a confirmation window and it will ask you if you want to delete the installer file for your firmware, but there's no way to click on the menu options on the bottom. Let me show you how to fix this. If you can't click on the options on the bottom, right click on your taskbar, then select taskbar settings. In the pop-up menu that appears, scroll down through the list of choices until you see taskbar behaviors and then left click on it to open additional options. In the list of choices that appear, you'll see a checkbox next to a listing for automatically hide the taskbar. Left click on the checkbox next to this option. Leave the taskbar options window open. Come down to the bottom of the screen which will reveal the taskbar. Locate the taskbar item for the Vita 3K setup and you'll now see that you have an additional option underneath the text box. You'll see the letter O for OK here, click on it to continue. You can leave your taskbar in automatically hide mode, or at this point you can just go right back down to the taskbar, reveal the taskbar settings window, and you can uncheck this option to set the taskbar back to being permanently docked at the bottom of your display. A quick note here, I tried scaling my display all the way down to 100% and all the way up to 350% and still had to complete this task in order for things to work correctly in advance through the setup process. You'll see a check mark next to Installed by Download Firmware indicating the firmware is installed correctly. Now click Next to continue. At the next setup screen, I recommend that you just leave these settings at their defaults. Click on Next in the bottom right corner to continue. The initial setup process of Vita 3K is now complete. Click on OK to launch the software for the first time. You'll see a splash screen appear with text welcoming you to the emulator and giving you some specific instructions, including downloading the official firmware. We've already taken care of that during the initial setup process. Uncheck the box that says Show Next Time and click on Close to continue. The emulator will prompt you to create a new user. Click the plus button in the center of the screen to get started. In this case, I'll just leave the avatar as the default avatar, but I'll backspace over the username and change it to the word subscribe so you don't forget to subscribe to the channel while you're here. Once you've chosen an avatar and a username, click the Confirm button in the center of the screen to save your changes. With your changes locked in, click the OK button right in the center of the screen to continue. Now you can select a user ID to log into Vita 3K with. You can also optionally choose to automatically log in this user each time by checking this box. Select the user ID that you just created to log into Vita 3K. And you'll see something quite familiar, the Vita lock screen. Your mouse and pointer work exactly like touching the screen on the Vita, so just click right in the center of the Vita screen to go to the main menu. You'll notice that the emulator scrolls several different colors of wallpaper theme inside the emulator. I'll show you a way to customize this in just a moment, but first, let's take a look at how to get games loaded inside the emulator. In the top navigation ribbon for Vita 3K, click on the File button. Just like was mentioned in the Dumping Games section of the Quick Start Guide, you can load .package files, .zip files, and .vpk files into the emulator. In this case, I'll be loading those no MPDRM files in zip format. Click the file format of your choice and you'll be asked to select the destination where your files are kept. In this case, I'll choose the entire directory with select directory. Remember how I had a games folder inside downloads pre-stage? That's going to be the directory. Click on the folder of your choice and then click select folder to continue. Okay, this is normally the part of a video where I just fast forward so we don't have to watch paint dry, but I don't want you to get stumped by this if you see it. In each one of the seven games that I copied over to the emulator, it paused at about the 68 to 69 percent mark, and it oftentimes stayed there for about a minute or two. If you see this happen while you're installing your games, don't interrupt the emulator and don't close it out. It's still doing its job. Once the installation process for all of your games is complete, you'll see a confirmation message appear on screen. In this case, all seven archived games installed successfully. 
Click the OK button in the bottom right corner of this pop-up screen to continue. You'll now see that all of the games that I copied over into the emulator are represented in the main menu of Vita 3K. You can use keyboard controls to play your games, but if you really want to shine it on, pair your favorite controller with your computer. In this case, I'm using an Xbox One controller wirelessly paired by Bluetooth to my computer, and Vita 3K picked it up and configured it immediately with no problem. Before you launch a game for the first time, there are two quality of life improvements you can make here. In the top navigation menu, click on Configuration, and in the drop-down menu, click on Settings. In the Emulation tab of the Settings window, there's a checkbox that says Boot Apps in Full Screen. If you want to start your games in full screen mode, check this box. The tab right next to this in the Settings window is called GUI. Click that tab, then take a look near the center of the window. You'll see some choices for the default theme. There's a checkbox here for Using Theme Background. If you uncheck this box, it will stop the color scrolling dead in its tracks. To lock in these changes, click the Save button near the bottom right corner of the Settings window. Then click Close on the left side to exit the Settings window. Alright, you've put in the work, time for the reward. Let's launch the first game. I'll start with Asphalt Injector by clicking on it, then clicking on Start in the center of the screen just like you would on a Vita. And sure enough, the game loads right up and plays smoothly. Do note that your game's frame rate and the quality of your gameplay experience will vary depending upon the title you've selected and the strength of your computer hardware. Now that you can emulate Vita games on your computer, why not learn how to emulate Wii and GameCube games? Tap the video shown on screen or link to the description to learn how.